They're going to sit there. No one is coming out. Wouldn't they? It's so I got to make sure this doesn't fly. Yeah, hold on to it tight. Okay. Just talk right into the mic. Okay. Oh, good. All right, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to welcome every one of you. In Armenian, I say Pari Kalust. Welcome. For a few days, we had nonstop rain and cloudy. And uh, this morning, extreme wind. But uh, now it's sunny and uh, it's blue skies and the wind is somewhat subsiding. <laughs> I'd like for you to know that one of our co-chairs, Stefan Pligan, was responsible for the weather. <laughs> On my left, this foundation is prepared to receive a stone chair, a uh, uh, bench, a stone bench. And uh, unfortunately, there are so many things that needed, needed to be done. Uh, it's, in, it's behind the building, uh, the bench. It hasn't been installed. But um, the bench has an inscription on the front. And the inscription uh, is uh, the first sentence written by Armenian letters by the creator of the Armenian alphabet, Mesrop Mashdot, in year 406. And the inscription in Armenian will say, Janas Chel Zimast Jun, Yev Imanal Spanus Hanjaro. To know wisdom and instruction to perceive the words of understanding. These words are a perfect expression in line with Nasser's mission. As we advance research and education around Armenian culture, history, and identity leading to a greater wisdom and understanding our past and to a very bright future. I am standing in front of the most exquisite modern door, wooden door you will ever see. Hand carved by master artisan, Melz Yeryazaryan, who lives and works in Armavir, Armenia, a town outside of Yerevan, and his daughters are here with us today. I would like to recognize Ed and Pamela Avedisian, the principal building donors and most generous philanthropists. It was their wish to the for the building to be named after one of the most esteemed educators and intellectuals, Vartan Grigorian, who is here with us today. And I'm not sure whether they're here yet. We are pleased to have with us David Ignatius, Washington Post columnist and master of ceremony for our gala tomorrow evening, as well as Secretary Ignatius, who along with all of his many accolades, has been a Nasser member for many years. Happy to have with us Isabel Bayraktarian, world-renowned operatic sensation, who will perform tomorrow evening. We are honored, and he's on his way, to have with us the president of Harvard University, uh, President Lawrence um, Bacow. He had another lecture to give at the school, and he is on his way, and uh, the roads are very crowded because of our event. 
We are very grateful for the fine cooperation of uh, local officials and welcome them to this opening. We also have with us people essential to this, peop uh, to this project's realization with your generous support. Ara Krafian, CEO of Sims Mani and McKee, known as SMMA, our talented architectural engineering and design firm. Michael Pardak, the chief architect, an artistic inspiration for this fine building and a tremendous team of extraordinary individuals. Janet Silja, president of Altair Construction, our general contractor and her team, as well as many subcontractors who were dedicated to delivering to us this magnificent building. Jessica Kuyumjian, vice president of Cambridge Savings Bank, for having confidence in our project. With all of the good intentions, With all of the good intentions and effort from many professionals, you will witness that we have a photo finish. Well, I think that we're approaching the final yards. <laughs> so, uh, they will be working hand, hard, and final to finalize details. For that reason, we have decided to move our priceless rare books, library, and bookstore which are in an environmentally controlled storage facility during the week of November the 18th. We welcome you all back to see uh, the, the building in full bloom. Now I would like to introduce Ara Krafian, CEO of SMMA. SMMA. SMMA provided full design services for the new construction of our 15,000 square foot world headquarters, which is one of the world's leading Armenian studies centers and their book libraries. Ara. Thank you. Uh, I want to start by saying what my friend Sheriff Katujan always says, isn't this a great day to be Armenian? I can't say with his booming voice, but I'll give it a whirl. Um, Chairman Yevan Chakijan, Dr. Vaitan Gregorian, Mr. and Mrs. Avedisian, uh, Board of Trustees, honored clergy, and all of you guests, thank you for, for being here. It's my pleasure to speak to you today. Um, so about four years ago, I got a phone call from a friend, Carney Gostayan, who said, on your way home from work, can you stop by the Nasser building? They have a little project that they'd like to get your opinion on. And I came here, and, and I think, uh, I know Mark was at the meeting, and Carney, I don't know if anybody else was there, but the little project in, involved keeping water out of the building, couple of little interior ideas about making the presentation space better and a facelift to give the front of the building a more sense of presence. Well, I was really an outsider at that time and, and shortly thereafter I became an insider. Um, and the project evolved uh, through forward-looking thinking of a very courageous board of trustees and uh, a relentless Yervant. As you, as you can see from his comment about it's a little windy, maybe, uh, Yervant is an optimist and, and a phenomenal fundraiser. Uh, with Yervant, Sarah Ignatius, Mark Mamigonian, uh, we had a, a special forces of an owner's team that was determined and resourceful. Uh, 
and we fulfilled a whole lot more than that initial objective of a little project. Uh, one of the most meaningful early uh, things that we did was we pursued a variance to get more building height and more building size. And when you go to the third floor solarium, I think you'll appreciate that that height was an important move. Uh, together, basically, we, we went through different design iterations and we came up with a building that is fully accessible, that's larger, that's more sustainable, that's more efficient, uh, that's more advanced as a library and uh, technologically, it's beautiful, and it's a building that can call itself Armenian. In addition to all of the generous financial support that this project received, it also received some in-kind support. Um, Nancy Kaligian with her firm, DCNE, really helped us uh, have a state-of-the-art HVAC system. In addition to the cap that Yerevan talked about, there's going to be a stainless steel surround that's carved with, uh, with Armenian design, and that's, gonna, that's donated by the Mardiros family. And of course, uh, soon we'll be unveiling Michael Adams' uh, beautiful sculpture. Actually, we might have already unveiled it. Uh, uh, so, uh, I have to thank Altair Construction. Uh, these projects don't happen without dedicated teams and partnerships. Uh, it takes an owner, an architect, and a contractor working together. Um, for any of you who live in the area, you've seen a beehive of activity the last month morning, day, and night, weekends. Um, and I really appreciate their effort to help us get close to finishing for today. Um, you know, they, Nietzsche once said, whatever doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Janet, I don't think you realize you had to kill you almost to get there. So, so we're, now we're there. Um, I also have to acknowledge uh, the hard work of my own team. Um, we have been on this project, as I said, for four years uh, through concept designs, through completing construction documents for, I think, three different buildings uh, along the way. We've helped um, with AV, with furniture, with signage, with procurement, um, and, uh, and all the design services. So in all, 94 people from the firm participated uh, and contributed to this project. Um, I won't name them all, uh, but I, as, as Yervan says, I really do have to, to single out Michael Pardek, my partner, who was the design leader of this project, and, and really the project that you see behind you is a fulfillment of his, of his inspiration and creativity. Um, if you want to see any more about that, we do have on our website a piece called Brick by Brick, Preserving the Armenian Diaspora and it'll tell you more about all that inspiration. Uh, the building is full, as, as Yerevan said, with Armenian symbolism. There's the etched glass. There's precast panels on the side of the building. There's the bench surround and the bench cap. There's the Armenian Khachkar, which was uh, built in Armenia, as Yerevan said, by Mel Yerizaryan, and it's a uh, fantastic craftsmanship. Um, there is the uh, Noravank Monastery-inspired uh, stair, and there is a Mesorot Mashtrot-inspired alphabet. Uh, there will be many more of these things uh, that you'll see, and it'll get even better when the building is filled with artifacts and ancient modern text and artwork. Um, in true Nasser fashion, this building tells an Armenian story. It's a research project, a study in Armenian art and architecture. Um, the Nasser headquarters is a very special place. It's informed by 3,000 years of history to inspire contemporary scholars. And uh, we're very proud of it. We hope to see the building active soon. And we hope it's the best promoter of Nasser's mission and a valuable place for friendships. Soon it'll be up to just Mark and Sarah and the Nasser team to take this from a beautiful building and turn it into the Nasser headquarters with programs that inspire generations of people to learn our history, to appreciate our present day challenges, and to shape our future. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you, Ara. Now I have the pleasure to introduce you 
to our executive director, Sarai Ignatius, a most dedicated member of NASA's team. Sarah has worn multiple hats during the past years and has spent countless hours handling multiple responsibilities. In addition to her duties as executive director, Sarah performed the duties of a project manager for this beautiful building, attending, uh, attending to thousands of crucial decision points. As if that wasn't enough, Sarah co-chaired this weekend's celebrations with Stepan Piligian. We thank Sarah for her diligence and extraordinary leadership. Sarah. Thank you. Thank you, Yervant. And you'll have to repeat all that because I don't think my father and brother are here yet. So <laughs> caught in a little traffic. Anyway, I'm incredibly proud to be here in front of this gorgeous building, in front of all of you. All of you are part of this building. Uh, obviously, our contractors, dedicated team, our subcontractors, the people who brought beautiful soil that's underneath this building, who built the soaring glass wall, our architects, designers, um, who've just done the most phenomenal job that you will soon be able to experience, and our friendly postal workers who put up with being disrupted for over a year and a half with our construction vehicles and everything else. I think after all of this, we are truly one great big family united by having gone through this together. And I hope we'll stay that way because the whole point of this building is to have a building for the entire community worldwide. And I'm appreciate, especially humbled to be here a little bit tongue-tied in front of the, one of the greatest intellectuals and educators of our time whose name graces our brand new building and will inspire generations to come, Vartan Gregorian. So thank you very much. So I was going to say, if you're new to Nasser and tell you a lot of really great things about us, I think I really recognize an awful lot of people here, which is fabulous, and also we're standing out here in the wind. So I just very, very briefly want to say that we really are serious about making this a place for the community. We have 18 Wi-Fi hotspots, and I heard today from our IT people they think we need a 19th. So in other words, when you see these spaces and you think, this would be a fantastic location to come and study, do homework, write uh, your next novel, or research in our rare book, Mardigan Library, S come to a very innovative, interesting program, uh, have meetings with colleagues and friends, do that. Look at all these spaces and think of them as your own. Think of them as places that you want to come to, to meet with your colleagues and friends, to brainstorm ideas, to advance your own intellectual development, to hear from scholars. Nasser's mission, as you know, is to advance Armenian studies and to build a worldwide community around Armenian culture, history, and identity. You don't have to be Armenian to do that. So we really are so grateful to all of you, the incredibly generous community that has come together around this building, made it a spectacular reality. So please enjoy the day, and I'll just leave you with this parting thought that I hope all of you again, as you look through the building, think of this as your destination and a place where you can come at any time. Thanks so much. Thank you, Sarah. She's never been tongue-tied. <laughs> um, now I have the distinct pleasure to, to introduce you to Vartan Grigorian, president of Philanthropic Foundation, the Carnegie Corporation of New York. He has had such a distinguished career as an academic scholar, historian, philanthropist, and a visionary that a list of accomplishments, honorary degrees, and awards are even bigger than this building. 
A couple of highlights. He led Brown University as president, leading a period of rapid expansion, and was president of New York Public Library, leading a major revitalization there. He was a Tarzan professor of Armenian and Caucasian history and professor of South Asian history at the University of Pennsylvania, and then became the provost of that university. He has received 70 honorary degrees and dozens of significant awards, including the Presidential Medal of Freedom. Dr. Gregorian. Thank you very much, Yervant. Reverend clergy, distinguished guests, Edward, Pamela, and uh, who else do I see? Where is uh, Sarah? Sarah, thank you. I'm not going to be responsible giving some of you a uh, cold, and so I'm going to discard my speech. I'm just going to say a few things only to cut the proceedings short, because uh, I cannot follow lawsuits from you, freezing you here today <laughs> instead of <laughs> you. So let me go this way. I returned from Armenia two days ago after spending a week there. And I defined heroes of our time now, those who have gone from charity to philanthropy. Uh, one is dealing with uh, sympathy, empathy, uh, uh, guilt, whatever promotes people to give charity. The other is covering causes that have produced, dealing instead of symptoms, you deal with causes through philanthropy. So one of the highlights of my visit was Avetisian school and uh, 600 students from fourth grade all the way to 70, age 14, 17, all expenses paid, room, board, and education, preparing a new generation of Armenians not to flee Armenia, but to invest in Armenia. And Ed Avedisian is my hero. Second hero I met also from Massachusetts was, along with Pamela, Massachusetts I met with Carolyn Mugar, six million trees planted in 25 years. Six million trees. Third hero I bet were uh, Vartan, uh, Ruben Vartanian and Nuba Rafeyan, co-founders of Aurora, when I visited Dilijan uh, College, now one of the most prominent colleges in Europe elsewhere, where they bring 18 nationalities making Armenia a place to go to receive best education so we don't have to bribe any of the, the admission officers of universities <laughs> to get involved. If you're a graduate of Dilijan, you have access to all the Ivy League and all the best universities in the world. Third one I met, Hero, was ordinary people specially investing in Armenia. But the time has come for us to invest in Armenia rather than a not charitable case, but as a true investment. And I'm giving my, some of my regards what I will be talking about tomorrow night. We've invested all over the world except Armenia. We have invested in Singapore, First Church, in Madras, in Calcutta, in Marseille, in Krakow, in Poland, in Kiev, in Rostov, in St. Petersburg, uh, everywhere except Armenia. The time has come for us to also invest in Armenia. And second and third thing, I'll finish my remarks. We have also matured in America for the first time. All of us united to preserve what we have, telling we're here to stay and we're here to help Armenia and everywhere because Armenians did not come here to disappear, but they followed the sanction, the dictum of uh, George Washington that you come here because your date is with Constitution of the United States. You come here, you cannot, don't have to abandon your religion, your identity in order to be good Americans. And we're also here to celebrate that. And this building, as you can see, my remarks about libraries are the best thing that has happened for this community. We're not temporarily here. We're here to exist, to promote and to help Armenia and all Armenian communities. 
That's why I welcome this one. And I welcome also a museum in the Los Angeles Armenian Museum that will be, you know, to show in 400 years what we've done in Armenia. The first Armenian came to America four centuries ago, uh, 400 years ago. Uh, uh, it was, uh, I think, uh, brought silk industry to Virginia and others. We're here not to be apart from, but part of America, but without abandoning our identity nor our destiny. One more point. This happiest moment for me because this stubborn man, Ed Avedisian, did not accept my proposal to name building after everybody except me, <laughs> including himself, including Charles Aznavour, and so forth, so on. I begged him, and my colleagues criticized me for not taking the offer because they said, you're being very selfish, denying an opportunity to finish a building by not lending your name. So I'm very happy for the first time, two of my ambitions, childhood, I'm going back to childhood. One was the church library where I grew up and read Tabriz Archdiocese, it is that position. And second, where people of Providence, well, I urged the governor and the mayor of Providence local community to name their elementary school after me. Of all the honors I have received in elementary school and this are the most rewarding ones because they deal with education and they deal with the future. So thank you, Ed. Bless you. Bless all Armenians, AGBU, IRS. For the first time, we've risen about our divisions because more unites us than divides us now in the last 50 years. So thank you very much, and God bless. Thank you, President Vartan Grigorian. I just noticed that uh, our, our ambassador, the Armenian ambassador, uh, is here with us, Ambassador Nersesyan and his lovely wife. Thank you very much. Now it is my honor and pleasure to introduce Michael Aram, world-renowned Armenian-American artist who has created and donated a site-specific sculpture for our building. I will let him tell you about it and unveil it, even though the wind, I think, has unveiled it. Well, thank you, everyone. And uh, it's such a pleasure to be here today and to see such an amazing crowd. I'm so honored to, um, to be part of this event and so honored to also have my family join me. So thank you all. Um, mostly, I would like to thank Yervant Chekijian for asking me to make this piece in the first place. Uh, what was so wonderful is that he gave me, I think, about three months from the idea to execution. <laughs> But I do think the best things happen um, you know, when you're passionate about it and when you know you have to get it done. Uh, it was an honor to create a piece which, in my own small way, is now part of the permanent part of this building and for an organization which continues to perpetuate Armenian culture, a rich culture whose artistic traditions have shaped who I am as an artist and as a person. Thanks to Nasser, I and the future generations of scholars and creatives can study and be inspired by our unique artistic legacy and understand its unique importance to world culture. While discussing the piece with Mr. Chekijian, I was very inspired by the idea of eternity and how it related to Nasser's mission to safeguard and preserve our culture. Perhaps we can say for time and all eternity. Today is part of eternity. I present to you my eternity sculpture. A circle is the reflection of eternity. It has no beginning and no end. If you can look at the sculpture and see that there are peacocks in the corners 
which were actually inspired by some of our medieval Armenian manuscripts, um, you'll see that I use them as a symbol of eternity because traditionally it's said that peacock flesh never deteriorates and it's a symbol of eternal life. Also, the feathers come back every year and are a symbol of uh, resurrection. The vines inside in the next circle form figure eight shapes, which again are very traditional symbols of eternity. If you look at some ancient Armenian art, you'll see snakes in figure eights which eat their tails. So it's a cycle of life, death, and regeneration. They repeat and they repeat. The laurel leaves on the next ring, which are evergreens, are classical symbols of victory and eternal life. And the center of the piece is a simple flower, but for us as Armenians, it's a very potent symbol of eternity. The petals lilting slightly clockwise to the future, representing progression and growth. Also celestial life and the center of the universe. In the very center, uh, I made a round box, which is quite small, but I've made it as a personal time capsule uh, where I have put personal mementos of what I consider to be eternity. I've put loving notes from my children and to my children. And in contemplating what eternity meant for me, my realization is that love is eternal. And if we can agree that God is love and that God is all things, then we can agree that the sum of all things is eternity. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Now we are privileged to have with us clergy in our community for the blessing of the building. I saw your and your gravorats no rockman, Kazinoroko, Eid, Hokin, Eisurver, Nadun, Borov, Noroketan. Tascara ke Hallelujah, hallelujah. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. A house is built by wisdom and becomes strong through good sense. Through knowledge, its rooms are filled with all sorts of precious riches and valuables. The wise are mightier than, than the strong, and those with knowledge grow stronger and stronger. So don't go to war without wise guidance. Victory depends on having many advisors. Alleluia, alleluia. A reading from the book of First Kings. So he built the house and finished it. He roofed the house with beams and planks of cedar. He built the structure against the whole house, each story five cubits high, and it was joined to the house with timbers of cedar. Now the word of the Lord came to Solomon concerning this house that you are building. If you will walk in my statutes, obey my ordinances, and keep all my commandments by walking in them. Then I will establish my promise with you, which I made to your father David. I will dwell among the children of Israel and will not forsake my people Israel. So Solomon 
built the house and finished it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Unless the Lord builds the house, its builders work for nothing. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the men who watch over it stay awake for nothing. For those of us who can please rise for the Gospel reading. The Holy Gospel of Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Everyone then who hears these words of mine and acts on them will be like a wise man who built his house on a rock. The rain fell, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house. But it did not fall, because it had been founded on rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not act on them will be like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain fell, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell, and and great was its fall. Let us pray. Almighty and omnipotent Lord God, who grants all goodness and ensures all success. Behold, your servants have worked diligently and labored with holy reverence toward you. Now the time has come for them to enjoy the fruits of their hard work and just labor. Lord, bless them now with your heaven-sent benedictions and grant it with your blessings they enjoy undisturbed the fruits of their labor with joy and satisfaction. Bless this newly built building. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And keep all malevolence, mishap, and misfortune far away from it. Make the grace of your mercy abundant upon it, and establish its foundation upon love and devotion toward you. For only through you can any home, office, workplace, any building be built and preserved so that it will flourish and grow. Without you, those who build it labor in vain. And because the builders of this new center have put their trust in you, let their hope be crowned with your divine blessings that they may with perpetual thanksgiving praise the most holy trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and always and forever and ever. Amen. By the Holy Cross, let us beseech Christ our Savior, that through it he save us from our sins and grant us life by the grace of his mercy. Almighty Lord our God, Save us and have mercy upon us. Guardian and hope of the faithful Christ our God, preserve, protect, and bless the newly built headquarters of the National Association of Armenian Studies and Research, those who erected it and those who contributed to its building as well as all the members of the Nasser and the faithful gathered here under the divine protection of your holy and venerable cross in peace. Save us from visible and invisible evil and allow us to thankfully glorify you with the Father and the Holy Spirit now and always and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Mia sin hair meras ink ortnial der mer Jesus Christos amen hair mer ore innocens sur ia vitiarum co ia gestar caiunco ia vitingam co vordes et innocens et gregri sas mer hana basort lurnes aisor ia tomes es vardis mer vordes ia mecto uc merots farda banats ia milani les mesi portuion ai purga es mesi chare Amen. May you be blessed in the grace of the Holy Spirit. Depart in peace and may our Lord Jesus Christ be with you one and all. Amen. My congratulations and thanks to all of you.
Thank you. Uh, thank you for to our clergy. Oh, watch out. Watch out, honey. Uh, now we are approaching uh, ribbon cutting. Uh, we have two ribbons there. One is called the generational cutting, and the other one is going to be uh, um, the benefactors of the building and the namesake of the building. So for the, the first part, we have the two most senior members of Nasser, Van Aroyan and Jack Mezzorian. Now, along with the next generation, eight-year-old twins of Michael Aram and Arek Tikirian, Cole and Cole Zarensky, grandson of Carol and Rafi Yevyayan, and grand nieces and grand nephews of Vartan Grigorian. We're, we're, we're serious about the next generation. Now I would like to invite Ed and Pamela Avedisian and Vartan Grigorian, Sarah Ignatius, and I think I will take part in it too. Uh, but uh, I would like to now ask that once this ribbon is cut, you let our young ambassadors uh, usher in the dignitaries and then please uh, follow them. Uh, enjoy seeing the building, enjoy the reception, and I would like to thank Nina and Rafi Fustikshan for supplying the d delicious food from Anushallah. Thank you very much.
Armenian American has a really powerful feeling to be in this building and the way that it opens. Adrian Amirian and one of Young's children and grandchildren are here starting to my left Armin Young his son Christopher and Adrena Young Gobi and her daughter Mariah and we are extremely happy to have them here so as I was saying we undertook a project to it was important for us to look to the past as we move to the future and there was one person who of course was the driving force behind Nasser he worked tirelessly he traveled the country when they had their banquet in 1959 after the establishment of the first chair in Armenian studies at Harvard there were 1,500 people there, and Manu worked so hard. His family will attest to the fact that he would work here till 4 in the morning, mm -hmm. yeah. and Armand would come check on him or bring him something bring him to eat. <laughs> so it was, uh, it was important for us to recognize him. So we powwowed, and we decided that we needed to do something special, and Roxanne did her homework, and we found a foundry in Canton, Mass. We found a sculptor, sculptor Jeff Bucaccio and his wife Nina, who did something very special for us. We wish they were here today, but they are on another project in New Jersey. But this, I'm standing behind something that we feel will represent our love and devotion and appreciation to a gentleman who, if he were here today, would be very happy and proud of where Nasser is today. He may have said, Nancy, I think you spent too much money. <laughs> <laughs> but the results are beautiful. So I'm going to ask Chris and Mariah to come on either side. Mariah, you come over here. And Chris, you come there. And I'm going to ask them to put their hands on this. Mariah, can you put your hand up there? Atta girl. And can you just pull it very gently? Go ahead. Don't be afraid. Oh, girl. <laughs> there you go. Put your grandfather. We are so happy. What do you think? Yeah. 